There's a machine floating in the Pacific Ocean right now that's doing something everyone said was impossible. It's scooping up plastic by the ton, and the trash it's pulling from the water hasn't seen daylight in decades. Some of it predates the internet. We're talking about garbage that's been marinating in salt water since before you were born. Now suddenly sitting on a boat deck, dripping and covered in barnacles. Sounds like science fiction, right? Except it's happening right now, and the numbers are absolutely bonkers. Keep watching, because what's coming out of the ocean is changing everything we thought we knew about ocean cleanup. Let's back up for a second. You've probably heard about the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. That floating island of trash twice the size of Texas that everyone loves to bring up at dinner parties to make things awkward. But here's what most people get wrong. It's not actually an island. You can't walk on it. You can't even see most of it from a boat. It's more like a soup. A disgusting, depressing soup of microplastics suspended in seawater, stretching across 620,000 square miles of open ocean. That's bigger than Alaska. Bigger than France, Germany, and Spain combined. The patch sits between Hawaii and California, right in the North Pacific subtropical gyre. That's just a fancy way of saying it's trapped in a massive, swirling current that acts like a toilet bowl that never flushes. Ocean currents from around the Pacific dump trash into this spot, and it just stays there, spinning, accumulating, breaking down into smaller and smaller pieces but never actually disappearing. Scientists estimate there's about 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic floating in the patch. Let that sink in for a second. 1.8 trillion. That's roughly 80,000 tons of plastic. To put that in perspective, that's the weight of 500 jumbo jets. Except instead of flying through the sky, they're just sitting in the ocean. A huge problem. But also, everyone agreed there was basically nothing we could do about it. The ocean is massive. The plastic is spread out. Most of it floats just below the surface where you can't even see it. Trying to clean it up would be like trying to remove all the sand from a beach using only tweezers. Expensive, pointless, and probably impossible. Then this Dutch kid showed up and said, hold my bike. I'm doing it anyway. His name is Boyan Slat. And in 2013, when he was just 18 years old and definitely should have been worrying about college finals or whatever teenagers worry about, he gave a TEDx talk about cleaning up the Pacific garbage patch. Not just talking about it. At least in theory. Instead of chasing plastic around the ocean with boats and nets like some kind of aquatic game of tag, why not let the ocean do the work? Build a massive floating barrier, anchor it in the current, and let the plastic come to you. People thought he was naive, idealistic. Some said he was flat out delusional. Ocean cleanup had been attempted before, and it always ended the same way. Failure, embarrassment, and a lot of wasted money. He dropped out of his aerospace engineering degree and started a nonprofit called the Ocean Cleanup. Then he did something crazy. He convinced people to give him money, a lot of money. By 2019, the Ocean Cleanup had raised over $35 million, not from governments or big corporations, but from regular people who wanted to believe this impossible thing might actually work. They built their first prototype, a massive U-shaped floating barrier called System 001. The media nicknamed it Wilson. After the volleyball and castaway, which honestly should have been a red flag, they towed Wilson out to the garbage patch in September 2018. It was 2,000 feet long, shaped like a giant horseshoe, and designed to drift along with the current while a three-meter skirt dangled below the surface to catch plastic. The whole thing was supposed to be powered by wind and waves. No fuel, no emissions, just nature doing its thing while humans cleaned up their mess. And then Wilson broke. Spectacularly, a section of the barrier snapped off in December 2018, just a few months after launch. The ocean had literally ripped their invention apart. Critics pounced. See? We told you. Impossible. Waste of money. Pack it up and go home, kid. But here's where the story gets interesting. Because Slat didn't quit. Most people would have slunk back to the Netherlands and gotten a normal job. Instead, Slat and his team went back to the drawing board. They analyzed what went wrong. They redesigned the system. They launched System 002, which they called Jenny. Jenny was different. Bigger, stronger, and smarter. Instead of drifting passively, it had active propulsion. 
Two boats would tow a massive net between them, creating a giant scoop moving through the water at about one mile per hour. Slow enough not to harm sea life, fast enough to actually collect plastic. The net went 10 feet deep, catching everything from massive fishing nets, to bottles, to those little plastic rings that hold six packs together and choke sea turtles. And Jenny worked, like actually worked. In 2022, the Ocean Cleanup announced they'd pulled 63,000 pounds of plastic from the ocean in a single haul. That's 28 tons. In one trip, suddenly the impossible thing didn't seem so impossible anymore. But they didn't stop there. In 2023, they launched System 003. And this is where things get absolutely insane. Nicknamed Harry, is three times bigger than Jenny. It's 8,200 feet long. That's more than one and a half miles of floating barrier. The thing is so big it looks like a naval operation when it's deployed. And it works even better. Harry can capture up to 200,000 pounds of plastic per trip. That's 90 tons. Per trip. Let me put that in context. That's roughly the weight of 60 cars. Or about 12 adult elephants. Or one space shuttle. Just imagine a space shuttle's worth of garbage floating in the ocean. And these guys are pulling it out like it's no big deal. By the end of 2023, the ocean cleanup had removed over 500 tons of plastic from the Pacific. Half a million kilograms. That's more plastic than has been removed from the ocean by all other cleanup efforts combined. And they're just getting started. The plan is ambitious. SLAT wants to deploy a fleet of these systems, all working simultaneously in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. They estimate they could remove 50% of the patch every five years. You read that right. Half of it. Gone. Within five years. Now you might be thinking, okay, that sounds great, but what happens to all this plastic once they pull it out? Do they just dump it in a landfill? Because that would be pretty depressing. Saving the ocean only to trash the land? Here's where it gets even better. The ocean cleanup isn't just removing plastic. They're recycling it. Every piece of trash they pull from the ocean gets sorted, processed, and turned into new products. They've partnered with companies to create sunglasses, phone cases, and other products made entirely from ocean plastic. You can literally buy a pair of sunglasses made from garbage that was floating between Hawaii and California last year. And people are buying them. A lot of them. Each product comes with a certificate telling you exactly which cleanup mission your plastic came from. It's like adopting a highway, except way cooler and slightly less weird. But the financial model is genius. By selling recycled products, the ocean cleanup is creating a revenue stream that helps fund more cleanup operations. It's a self-sustaining loop. Remove plastic, recycle it, sell it, use the money to remove more plastic. Capitalism. But make it environmental. Now let's talk about what's actually in the garbage patch. Because it's not what most people think. You might imagine plastic bags and water bottles floating around. And sure, those are there. But the majority of the plastic in the patch, about 46%, is fishing gear, nets, lines, buoys, and traps. This stuff is called ghost gear. And it's a nightmare. Ghost gear doesn't just float around looking ugly. It actively kills things. Abandoned fishing nets keep fishing. They drift through the ocean, tangling up sea turtles, dolphins, whales, sharks, and basically anything else that has the misfortune of swimming into them. It's estimated that ghost gear kills hundreds of thousands of marine animals every year. Some estimates go as high as a million. The ocean cleanup has pulled some absolutely massive fishing nets from the water. We're talking nets the size of football fields. One net they recovered was so big and so tangled it took days to haul it onto the ship. When they finally got it on deck, they found it was full of marine life. Dead marine life. Skeletons of fish, crabs, and even sea turtles that had been trapped and drowned years ago. It's haunting. But it's also why this work matters so much. Here's another thing most people don't realize. The plastic in the ocean isn't new. A lot of it has been there for decades. The ocean cleanup has pulled up bottles with expiration dates from the 1970s. Fishing buoys with Japanese writing from the 1980s. Plastic toys that haven't been manufactured since before the internet existed. This trash has been floating out there longer than some of you reading this have been alive. And here's the scary part. Plastic doesn't biodegrade. It just breaks down into smaller and smaller pieces. Those tiny pieces, microplastics, are now everywhere. 
In the fish we eat. In the water we drink. Scientists have found microplastics in human blood, in placentas, and even in the air we breathe. There are literally pieces of someone's old water bottle floating around inside you right now. Sleep tight. This is why removing plastic from the ocean isn't just about making the water look prettier. It's about stopping the source of microplastics before they break down further. Every big piece of plastic the ocean cleanup removes is potentially millions of microplastic particles that will never enter the food chain. But we need to be real for a second. As incredible as the ocean cleanup's work is, it's not the whole solution. For every ton of plastic they remove, we're dumping 8 million tons into the ocean every year. 8 million. That's like bailing water out of a sinking boat while someone else is drilling more holes in the hull. The real solution has to happen on land. We need to stop producing so much plastic in the first place. We need better waste management systems so plastic doesn't end up in rivers and oceans. We need governments and corporations to actually care about this problem and invest in solutions. But here's why the ocean cleanup still matters. Because it proves it can be done. For years, people said cleaning the ocean was impossible. Too expensive. Too complicated. And now there's a fleet of machines out there doing it anyway. Proving the cynics wrong. Showing that impossible just means nobody's figured it out yet. And the technology is getting better. System 003 is already more efficient than System 002, which was better than System 001. Each iteration learns from the last, gets bigger, faster, more effective. The ocean cleanup is also developing systems for rivers, because that's where most ocean plastic comes from. Indonesia and the Dominican Republic. The goal is to catch plastic before it reaches the ocean in the first place. One barrier in the Dominican Republic removed 850 tons of plastic from a river in just two years. That's plastic that would have ended up in the Caribbean, shredding coral reefs and filling the stomachs of sea turtles. Instead, it got caught, removed, and recycled. The results from these river systems are arguably even more impressive than the ocean cleanup, because prevention is always better than cure. Stopping plastic at the source means you don't have to chase it around the Pacific 20 years later. Let's talk numbers again, because the scale of this is hard to wrap your head around. The ocean cleanup's goal is to remove 90% of floating ocean plastic by 2040. That's not a typo. 90%. In 16 years, they want to clean up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, the Atlantic Garbage Patch, the Indian Ocean Garbage Patch, all of them. To do this, They'll need about 60 ocean systems and around 1,000 river barriers worldwide. The estimated cost, $2 billion, which sounds like a lot until you remember that Americans spend more than that on Halloween candy every two years. We could clean the ocean for the price of some plastic vampire teeth and mini Snickers bars. And honestly, it's working. The data is clear. The plastic is coming out. Marine life in cleaned areas is rebounding. Beaches in Hawaii are seeing less plastic wash ashore. Fishermen are reporting fewer encounters with ghost nets. The improvements are real and measurable. But here's the thing that really gets me. This whole operation was started by a teenager who refused to accept that nothing could be done. Everyone told him he was wrong. Experts, scientists, engineers, they all said it couldn't work. And he built it anyway. That's not just inspiring. That's a middle finger to everyone who ever said the problem was too big to solve. Because here's the truth. Most of the world's biggest problems aren't unsolvable. They're just really hard. And most people give up before they even start because the problems seem too overwhelming. Climate change. Ocean plastic. Species extinction. Poverty. They're massive. Complex. Interconnected issues that make you want to crawl under a blanket and pretend everything's fine. But every once in a while, someone comes along who doesn't get the memo, who looks at the impossible thing and says, yeah, but what if we just tried anyway? Just sometimes they actually pull it off. The ocean cleanup isn't just removing plastic. It's removing excuses. It's proving that we're not helpless, that we can fix the things we've broken, that the ocean doesn't have to be a garbage dump, that maybe just maybe we can leave this planet better than we found it. So yeah. America and a bunch of other countries are removing millions of tons of plastic from the open ocean. The results are insane. The technology works. The plastic is coming out. The ocean is getting cleaner. And the kid who said he could do it is out there right now, somewhere between Hawaii and California, pulling our trash out of the water 
while the rest of us figure out how to stop making so much of it in the first place. The impossible thing is happening. And if this can work, what else can we fix?